Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mac Tech Keyboards and today we're taking a look at a new keyboard. I came across this, um, I want to say probably a few weeks ago, three, three weeks ago. I don't know how I missed this keyboard. Somehow it escaped my attention span. I came across it um, probably about two or three weeks ago and I reached out to them and I'm I said, this is quite an interesting looking keyboard. Is there a chance I could review one of them? And they were very gracious and uh, nice. And they were like, yeah, let's go ahead and get you one out. We'd love to have you review it. So today we're taking a look at the Lumen Key. I don't know too much about this. I did what I usually try to do on a lot of keyboards. I mean, some of the keyboards I can't help it. I'm going to read up on it. I'm going to find out more about it. But this one, I kind of just want to be surprised as I go. So, um, so the model for this keyboard is the Lumen Key 75, 75% with a barrel encoder up at the top. So let's go ahead and open it up. I do know that they offer this as a kit and also as a pre-built. So let's see what we've got in here. All right, looks like we've got a package full of goodies. Let's go ahead and go through this and see what we've got. Looks like we've got a test switch, a couple of what feel like gaskets and a 2.4 gigahertz receiver. I'm interested in the switch. Oh, it's a nice light linear from Gatoron. Huh, this is a Gatoron switch I have not seen before. It has the SMD window. It is kind of a beige tan with a Let's say an, a light olive green stem, and I would guess about a 35 to 40 gram weight spring. And it's nice to see. I always appreciate it when manufacturers put um, the name of the keyboard or even the model, but just the name or the manufacturer of the keyboard on the back of the dongle because. I have many dongles, and I'm sure there's some people that have bought wireless keyboards that have several dongles. And I mean, from USB to Bluetooth to 2.4s, but not knowing what they go to, I, I literally have a box of 2.4 dongles. I don't know what they go to. I'd have to sit and spend a day or two going through and testing each keyboard and making sure it was charged. And I, it's a nightmare to even think about. So when they add their name, it makes it much easier because if you only have one or a couple of keyboards from that manufacturer, it's much easier to whittle it down to which one it goes to. All right, so what do we have in here? Oh, that's right, this one comes already keyed. Looks like it's white on black, so we have some extra keys that are in a padded container. Okay. So we have some extra option keys to um, change. It looks like we have a step caps lock key, an enter key, an escape key, and an extra space bar. Of course, now I can't close it up. Oh, that's why it was hard if it had staples in there. <laughs> Here we have an artisan, what looks like a metal artisan key. Oh, all right, let's check this out. Oh, that's a tight little baggie. All right, and it looks like we've got a row one artisan key. I'm gonna guess that is part of their logo. I actually like the, um, the glossy black in there. The rest of the key feels like a aluminum, but I don't know what that glossy bit is. It could be resin. Let's put it back in its nice little case that I'll probably be loading it up on the keyboard here in a bit. All right, what's this? Do we have some more stickers? I always like stickers. 
Oh. oh, oh no. It's like a COA, Certificate of Authenticity, it looks like. This com device complies with the FCC rules. There's the date that it was put together, the assembly information. It was done by Maya. And it has the warranty information. Oh, and it has some of the um, some of the, eff the effects that are already programmed. Factory reset, switch wireless device, switch mode. And it is Maya compatible keyboard. That is lovely. And it looks like it has the wireless mode switch below the right shift key. All right. Wait a minute. Oh, no. This one is the Lumen Key 80, not the 75. Come on, Mark. This is the TKL, which I completely blanked out on there. I've been between the holidays and several different keyboards that all kind of just arrived at the same time. Plus, I'm working on a couple that are getting ready to be, you know, released. And I'm, I've got a couple like early edition uh, keyboards. I've just been busy. Plus, at the same time, I've been updating. I just updated my video recording rig. That's why we should not see any more frame rate drops. And I'm getting ready to build a new video editing workstation. So that should help uh, right now to render a video can take quite some time because I don't have a proper GPU in there. And now I'm getting a proper GPU. I mean, it's only a 3070, 3060, 3070 Ti. I'm not sure. I, I don't play games, so I don't really ever need anything uh, too powerful. Plus, I run Linux and not that there's that many choices. But in the process of everything, I've just been a lot busier than usual. So please excuse my um, my uh, nutty professor type of <laughs> uh, or personality uh, during this time. I am trying to get this out of the bag, but it does not want to come out. Oh, there we go. I am trying to see. Oh, okay. So these are switch pads. Um... There's just nine of them. Um, perhaps there's already some installed, or maybe this is a sample of something that they offer. All right. Here we have a switch and a keycap puller. And come on. I'm not best at opening packages. Bear with me. Alright, so I had to tear that open, but we have your standard wire switch and key cap puller with the Lumen Key logo on both sides. Very nice. Very nice. We have a nicely braided USB-A to USB-C cable. Ooh, I like how the ends of these, that's one of the first thing that I always look at when I look at these USBs and when I look at these USB cables is if they have these, they're basically tension uh, release or tension prevention. It's to prevent the little wires inside of the cable from breaking, from, you know, pulling it in and out, bending it, pushing it, whatever might happen. These help to keep that you know, nice and, and safe. So you're not going to be like, why is my USB cable not working? And this is a USB 2.0 cable. Um, we're going to start seeing USB 2 HS or USB 2 high speed and keyboards here in the next year or so. And that means that they'll be able to have 8,000 Hertz pulling rate um, without any drivers or anything special because it's going to be going over USB that has a much higher speed right now. I don't know when we'll, if ever we'll see any USB 3 keyboards, but I suspect at some point we'll have a reason to use USB 3. Uh, looks like we got a couple more things here. We got a baggie of some screws, a nut, a couple of nuts. Looks like properly plate screws, a couple of extra case screws. Always nice when they include extra hardware because I mean, these screws are tiny. I don't know how many times I've lost a single screw and just been like, I mean, <laughs> I have a pricey product. 
one screw, one tiny little screw. And of course, it's going to be something that you're not going to be able to find anywhere because they, you know, custom imported it from South Korea back in 1980. <laughs> so when they include this, I really appreciate it. And they actually include tools as well. And they actually include a little baggie with tools as well, which is really nice. Uh, most of us probably have our handy dandy toolkits, but if we don't, to have the actual sizes that we need. Um, another thing that I would like to see keyboard manufacturers do, because this is a question that comes up actually more often than you than you think on budget keys. Um, for you, those guys, those of you that don't know, I started and run budget keeps over on reddit it's a subreddit it's basically a sub forum a forum specifically for mechanical keyboards now we do call it budget keeps but we don't mean budget as in cheap we mean budget as in your budget what works for you uh, uh, i started budget keeps because i wanted people to be able to come and share their 30 dollar keyboard their $300 keyboard, the $3,000 keyboard. If it's within their budget, it's not putting their family out of house and food, then, I mean, you know, I'm not going to tell anybody how to spend their money. But getting back to what I was saying, uh, we have a thread on there. It's weekly. It gets refreshed weekly. We may need to go to daily once we grow enough. Actually, we're getting ready to hit 30,000 subscribers. You can get to it by going to budgetkeeps.com and you can also get to our Discord by discord.budgetkeeps.com. But in that question thread, there are so many times that people ask, hey, do you know what size screwdriver is needed to get the screws out of X keyboard? Do you, not, do you know what size Allen wrench or Torx wrench that I need to get the screws for the case or the screws for the plate or the screws for XYZ? And this information is hardly available. I've seen maybe one keyboard manufacturer actually list the size of the screws. Um, and, you know, not only their what tool size you need, but the actual length, the uh, thread, you know, the, the differences. But I think that any keyboard should list this information. I mean, if it's not using a standard, you know, Phillips head bit, or if it's using a really small one, include the size I mean you guys have the information so include the size um, including the tools is a huge step though and I do appreciate that so now that we've gotten through that you guys stay 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 I have to hold you down look at that I just opened this up and I already got cat hair cats i swear now, now they are the boss so don't tell my cats i've been talking about them okay i don't want to get in trouble again uh, we have a lovely hunk of aluminum a lovely weight oh yeah So really quick, I'll read this. Group by units notice. Please check the board surface before opening the plastic seal. Once the plastic coating is broken. Coating? Oh, okay, the sticker. Oh, it's like a void sticker. Okay. I did not do that. That was my fault. All right. Uh, so basically, if you do get one of these, inspect it before opening this. So that if there is an issue... It's actually pretty ingenious, I gotta say, because I mean, these stickers, there's really no way to stick this back on. The void is there. Um, you could do pr pretty much any sort of, you know, outside surface um, checking inside of the bag. I did not do that. And, well, thankfully they included an extra screw because, uh, That's a, I mean, I didn't check, but this screw is already loose. And this screw is missing. 
Uh, that's a little, uh, this one's loose. This one's loose. Quite a few of these are loose, and I don't think that they need to be loose for shipping. I'm going to go ahead and tighten them up, although I'm probably going to be opening it up in a little bit to see what's in here. But for right now, tighten the loose screws. Three loose screws and one missing screw. It's a little worrisome that, I mean, I mean, it's one thing if it was loose in the bag. I mean, but still how, I don't know, I just don't see how one of these uh, bits just gets lost uh, like that. Now, granted, yes, they do have extra hardware, so it's not uh, a breaking issue, but it is of concern to me anyway. All right, let's take this, move it aside. There's no screw in there. Oh, that's the USB cover. All right, so taking a look at this, we have a very standard wedge type of design, although I, I do like those lines on the side. We have what is a very, very lovely to sang in bottom row F13 TKL. I'm a big fan of TKLs. Um, probably one of my favorite, actually it is my favorite layout. Um, I've been using TKLs for a long time. I was one of the first when they first came out because back then I was primary, I mean, I, I was doing programming, but I was doing also a lot of um, administrative stuff. So despite having a numpad, um, and actually, I had one of those, I can't remember the brand, they're not around anymore, but it was a, a calculator numpad that, I mean, they have them now. I mean, it wasn't a mechanical or anything like that. Um, I don't even know if it was membrane or uh, what it was. It was pretty quiet, though, and had shallow keys, but it had uh, AA batteries, and if it was just disconnected, you could turn on the calculator feature and it had a you know, little LCD screen and you could use it as a calculator. But if you plugged it in, it worked as a numpad. But I didn't use it that often. I actually just <laughs> stuck to the number rows, but that's neither here nor there. Um, but TKLs have become my favorite. And not only that, TKLs with the Tsangan bottom row because of being able to find these single one use amongst the bigger modifiers and i mean who doesn't want more space for the space bar right <laughs> now one thing i do want to do since this case kind of told me i could do it is to go ahead and change this out looks like i just need to flip it over yep and then we can take the step lock key. Yeah, I like that. I'm actually going to go ahead and add the accent keys. Oh. The enter. Oh, looks like that pad just came off. So those appear to be extra pads. So instead of having an IXPE sheet, it looks to just. Oh no, that might be an IXPE sheet. It's just loose because of the stabilizer bar. So. I'm guessing that should go under the stabilizer bar. We do have screw-in stabilizers, and they are smooth. Though I don't see any lubrication. We'll have to check on that here. And this also has, looks like it might have the options for a ISO built into it. Go ahead and 
put the white enter. And the white space bar. Gotta love it to saying good bottom, bro. Alright, so these are Gatoron Silva switches. S-Y-L-V-A. Inspired by the expensive and soothing natural natural landscape, Silva provides a harmonious and comfortable typing experience. It's definitely light. It's not lubricated. Why? Why wouldn't they include lubricated keys? It looks like there's a 9009 option here, and they didn't. I don't believe they asked me. Um, which one I wanted, but the 9009 actually looks to have windows on the caps lock key. <sighs> I've been really, really, really looking forward to getting the key cap set with the windows, and every time I think I'm close to getting one, it disappears. So, wish I would have paid a little bit more attention to that, but that's all my fault. All right, so we have these Gatoron Silver switches. Let's open it up and take a look. So the specs for this switch are they're made by Gatoron, it's linear, the top is nylon, the stem is palm, the bottom is nylon, and it's a stainless steel gold plated, has a total travel of 3.7 plus minus 0.3 millimeters, with an operating force of 48 plus or minus nothing, 48 grams of force. Hmm, huh. does not feel that heavy to me, it feels much lighter, but... Well, there is a little bit of lube on the uh, rail stem, but none on the spring or the leaf, just out of curiosity. A lot of times, just doing this will eliminate the spring pain. Sometimes you have to do the back of the leaf spring too, but... Close it up. Yep. Ping is gone. Just dipping the spring in a little bit of grease. That's, I gotta say, it's a nice looking uh, switch. It does seem to have some north to south wobble and some east to west wobble. More than I like. Hmm. All right, so let's go ahead and put you back in here, south facing, yep. Though, I gotta say, they actually sound really nice in here. I am not gonna complain at all over the sound signature. Well, let's take a look at these key caps and see what we've got. So we do have double shot all the way through. 1.2 uh, millimeters. Hmm. I'm, uh, okay. I mean, as long as it's over one, I'm fine, but I usually expect these to be 1.4, 1.5 or higher. Um, you know, if you're getting keycaps on a pre-built, one of the ones that I'm getting ready to work on for the release um, has 1.5 millimeter keycaps and definitely makes a difference. So, this is the uh, white on black, and they have a 9009 set. And this is a a lovely, lovely hunk of aluminum that it's got enough flex for me. Some though might decide otherwise. I do believe that that's a badge that can be changed out. And I do kind of like it. Um, it only seems to have lights for the caps lock, although I saw one that had that looked like it had a, an LED for the escape key, but could be wrong. Oh no, there is an LED for the escape key. Huh. 
So for that 9,009 set that you can get, they do have the window keys for the escape, the scroll lock, and the caps lock. But the rest of the keys do not have LEDs. So, um, we do seem to have a polycarbonate plate. We have some dense foam between the plate and the PCB. And we have some foam below. Now, let's go ahead and see about this on and off switch underneath the right shift. Now, that's a bigger key to lift up. I'm a big proponent of having, if you're going to have a switch on an aluminum keyboard and want to put it under a keycap, usually best under put it under a caps lock key. That's just my opinion, though. Um, this is a bigger key. The caps lock key is more likely going to be able to be removed with your fingers if you're in a bind, but this one is going to be a lot harder to remove unless you have the tool with you. So this one actually does say, if we look closely, on. Oops. Looks like it's soldered a bit crooked onto the plate. Let's go ahead and turn it on. Don't, I mean, don't get me wrong, a keyboard without RGB or LEDs is fine, but it's still nice to have some sort of indicator that it's on. I mean, I just hit the on switch and nothing's going on. So let me see about this. So function one is Bluetooth. No, oh, that's when the control is function. Okay, so I'm gonna switch it over to Bluetooth one and then try to put it into pairing mode. All right, so we are on, because there's that LED is going off, so. All right, so I had to switch modes. I had to do control function and tab to switch modes and then the lights came on um between the switches and the keycaps there's like no light bleed so i actually thought that there was no leds at first oh it does say here press tab to switch mode wireless mode one two and three will light up 2.4 will light up and if it's in wired mode five will light up so let's take five out Let's plug it in. I'm gonna take a look at Via real quick. All right, so it may not be the brightest bulb on the tree, but some of the keys have LEDs, not all of them. So, um, but I was able to. Um, connect to it with VIA using the VIA JSON file, and they've also uploaded it to um, their own domain. Yeah, it's luminkey.com. If you go to the support, it will uh, give you a link to VIA.evov.top. Um, what they do is basically load it in the background. I have a similar one, um, use VIA.budgetkeeps.com which basically just has some of the odd um, keyboards here and there that I found. Um, I'll probably go ahead and add this one in there as well. Uh, but I was confused. Some of the lights worked, some didn't. Um, basically, some lights are there to let you know. And yeah, you can do certain effects to escape, um, but there's really not much. That's why I was like, I don't see much light, because there isn't, because most of the keys do not have. Um, LEDs. So it's neither here nor there. We have four layers in uh, VIA and it has all the controls that you would find in a VIA um, configuration, but also has a link to um, the firmware file, the QMK bin file. Um, I'll have to. I, I just did a quick cursory. Uh, look, and I wasn't able to find the QMK source. I will have to reach out to them and see if um, 
if they have it on their own source tree. Because uh, I know some, some folks will want to be able to get in there in QMK, but they obviously have an MCU that works with VIA and QMK. And it, there's only one. I forget the model of it, but that's the one they must be using. Um, obviously, you can't program QMK over VIA. You do have to be in wired mode. And one of the things that just caught me is that, uh, for one, the control is actually function. Uh, I don't know. Uh, but you have to do control and tap to switch modes, and there's three different modes. There's the Bluetooth mode, which is the first three keys, uh, and you could switch between those, and you press and hold to go into pairing mode. There's the um, control tab or function tab to go into the next one, which is the 2.4 gigahertz, uh, the dongle. And then you do it one more time and then it, the five will light up and it seems to stay lit up so you know what mode you're in um but playing around with it my goodness i am i just continue to be impressed with the amazing quality of these keyboards that are coming out nowadays that they're just they're ready to go i mean I remember when I first started, now I didn't have access to pricey or aluminum kits. I started with the plastic ones. Um, but I saw, you know, some people buy the more pricier boards and immediately go and apply some mods to get it to the sound that they wanted. But this one and, and keyboards that I have been seeing lately just do not have that same issue because they are just ready to go. So um, this is an in-stock keyboard. Uh, it is available bare bone for $215. And the bare bone does include the metal artisan key. The case is available in an anodized black, an anodized silver, and an E retro white. Obviously this is the anodized black. Um, and it, they also offer a WKL version or a win keyless. Just the specs. Today we are taking a look at the Lumen Key 80. It is a three mode TKL available in both a bare bone and pre built edition. This keyboard has 1000 Hertz polling rate over both 2.4 and USB with 125 Hertz polling rate over Bluetooth. This keyboard weighs in at 2115 grams fully loaded and has a typing angle of 7 degrees. It has a gasket mounted PC plate with a 1.5 millimeter thickness and a hot swap PCB with a 1.6 millimeter thickness and only some LEDs. It also offers alternate layouts. Colors available for this keyboard are anodized black anodized silver, and e-retro white. When purchasing the pre-built version, it is available with either double shot white on black or 9009 PBT cherry keycaps. Also on the pre-built, it comes with Gateron Silva linear switches, which are made from both a nylon top and bottom housing and a palm stem with a 48 gram spring. This keyboard MSRPs for $215 bare bone and $280 fully pre-built with the switches and keycaps. It also includes a metal novelty key. So I've got to say, I've been using this keyboard for the past day or so, and I, even though, I'm not a crazy RGB guy, but if you're going to do them, either do them or don't do them. But I don't know. I mean, yes, they have lights for the positions and everything. I mean, uh, the devices, uh, slots if you use using Bluetooth at the 2.4. And you do have caps locks. You have a regular LED on the escape. And it appears that you have also an LED on the scroll lock. So it's just kind of, I mean, the 9009 set that's available has windows for those LEDs, which to me, then that makes sense. I don't know why they skipped adding the windows to this keycap set. That's just very minor nitpicky um, that I'm being. Otherwise though, this keyboard has been 
very enjoyable to use. The switches, I'm, I don't like so much. And I know I'm going to be switching them out when I come back to it. Um, it's a little bit lighter than I like. Um, I had never actually heard of this Gatoron Silva. It may just be a um, collaboration with Lumen Key just for this keyboard. Um, it would have been nice if they had an option for a tactile switch, but for me, this is a little higher pitched and very low weight. Even though it says it has a 48 gram spring, it honestly feels closer to a 40 gram spring to me. It's too light, and because um, I rest my hands on the keys. And if it's too light, I'm going to end up actuating it when I don't mean to. So I I will be coming back to this, uh, loading up some different switches, perhaps even some different keycaps. But as it is out of the box, um, this is, it. it's over two kilos. So it, it's very substantial. Um, it's It's got the F13 and the Tsangan bottom row, which is one of my preferred layouts for TKL. Um, it has a cool badge, which can also be replaced. It has um, a weight here as well. Um, I definitely look forward to getting into it, uh, and I will do that because um, I want to try some different mods out on here. But being that uh, it's the holidays, and I'm trying to do my best to manage time between a few keyboards I've got, um, a couple of them which are just getting announce the embargo and everything but I've and you know actually spending some time with my family <laughs> and not just sitting here uh, talking about keyboards it's just been a little hectic so um, I do plan to come back to this one because this is very solidly built um, it has nice flex um, it's not super but I'm not crazy about flex though it has very good sound uniformity going up and down the rows so uh, I look forward to putting some I don't want to say better it's not like this switch is bad it's just not my switch but it it's also not lubed so that could be a reason for that high pitch I'm sure if I lubed it um, and lube these switches it would give me a different tone though because of the PC plate and because of the foams there's no ping but I think that higher pitch that we're hearing could be because of the um, of the switches. Now, this is an in-stock keyboard, so it's available. You want it, you can buy it. I mean, I do think some of the, because they do have uh, wind keyless options, and I think that they're out of stock of some of the wind keyless, but um, depending on the combination, uh, this is an in-stock keyboard. So, um, despite it having a higher price tag, it is a custom keyboard, and it is solidly built. Um, so, at 215 for bare bone, 280 fully loaded. I think it's it's on the edge of being just the right price. But like I said, I need to get in there and really see what's going on. It does sound awesome. I mean, even even with these switches that aren't my preference, it does sound really nice and it feels nice. Again, I prefer less of a bounce, just a little bit of flex, just so it's a softer typing feeling. I don't want to be on a trampoline with my fingers bouncing up and down. Um, and I do prefer a tactile. So just getting that out of the way. I like the metal artisan key that they include. I know that this uh, little badge can be changed out and I think that's pretty cool. Um, I really, 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 really had wished that um, I'd either gotten the choice to choose the E, e off uh, the E white um, with the 9009 or that the white on black came with the LED windows as well. But I, I just, uh, like I said, I reached out to them. They said, yeah, uh, they didn't ask me which one I wanted. I, most of the times I, I let manufacturers, you know, pick unless they ask me which one would you like, um, you know, so that they can choose from their stock, you know, and obviously make it easier for them to provide one to me. And I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to be, uh, I don't get to pick. If I get to pick, I think that's a bonus. But like I said, this is a. It's a solid keyboard. Um, it's ready to go out of the box pre-built. Uh, though I think some folks might want to just go uh, um, bare bone. I mean, if you look at the difference, 215 and 280, $65. 
can get you some different switches and a different set of keycaps. Um, don't get me wrong, these are these are nice keycaps, and I have no issue with the Legends. Um, I'd be curious to know who manufactured them, but they are well made um, and they are quality. So. For myself, this is definitely a keyboard that I would be willing to say, all right, I'm gonna invest the money in this. Especially, I mean, I'm on, honestly, I'm almost tempted to buy me, uh, cause I don't have any WKL keyboards. So I'm tempted to get the off-white WKL with the 9009 um, and have two of these Lumen keys um, and purchase one myself. So that should probably speak as to what I think about this keyboard. It's a lovely TKL, and right now it's fighting for first place with another one that I just recently reviewed. And I'm sure if you guys have been paying attention, you'll know which one. So I wanna thank Lumen Keys for giving me the chance to review this keyboard. Um, again, I will be coming back to this. I will be making at least a couple, two to three videos minimum of this keyboard because I think, I think switching out the switches, the keycaps, as well as doing a couple of mods is going to take this to the S tier. And this might just be one of my end games. I'm never going to have a single end game. <laughs> I'll have an end game probably in each layout and of each material and with each switch. <laughs> Who knows how many end games I'll end up with. But this could definitely be one of them. I, I, I really like a lot of things about this. Now, it is a VIA keyboard. Um, the JSON file is on their site. They do list it as QMK and VIA, but all they have is the QMK bin on their website for flashing. When I asked for source, I was just pointed at the QMK bin. Um, I need, <laughs> not, not just me, customers need to know that, you know, the companies that are selling them their keyboards are being honest. QMK is an open source project. Um, you releasing a keyboard with QMK firmware and not following the actual copyright of QMK and releasing the source code along because you have to release it. If you're using it, you have to release it. Um, you're actually breaking compliance with the license. Um, I don't get where manufacturers are missing this point um, because I see so many keyboards that are listed. QMK VIA. Yes, they connect with VIA. Where's the QMK source? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Sometimes I don't even see a QMK bin, but they put QMK all over the box and everything. So, but this one, they, they are using QMK on their advertising for their website. And when I asked for the source, um, the sales agent didn't know what I was talking about and just pointed me to the bin, which is already compiled QMK. I would like the source of the QMK and by law, I should have access to it. Any, anyone that puts out a product and says that it's using QMK, you have to release the QMK source code. Now you should get it into the QMK, the actual QMK source tree. And that's just doing a pull request, um, a PR. Basically, if a keyboard is advertised as QMK, it needs to release the source. It really should um, have a PR to get merged into the actual QMK source tree. So it's, it's nice that it has fire. I can control it from Linux. But if I want to make changes to how the lights work, caps lock, whatever, I want to create, you know, more, I want to do more than what VIA offers me. And I want to get into QMK without the source code. How am I supposed to do it? So um, now if they're using a private blob for the wireless, then they're really really need to look at, at the GPL because there are certain things that one has to be responsible for when using open source software. Um, so I question that. I do get that there might be some, you know, 
cultural differences and misunderstandings. But if you're unsure, they could have gone to Reddit or any number of forums or even QMK and said, hey, we're putting out a keyboard. What steps do we need to do to be QMK, to be compliant with QMK's license? But so I don't know that I will continue to bring that up because that is an issue. I mean, if I want to go in there, there's there's things that I might like to do to the keyboard and it's QMK compatible. I want to be able to do it. Now, I understand this is wireless. So if you're using a private blob, read the GPL for QMK keys, please. I, I beg of you um, and and make the QMK source available. So, but that said, hardware wise, this is a great keyboard. I am going to uh, to be using it, but I am going to be taking out the switches. Though I'll wait and I'll do that on video. Um, replace the switches and probably the keycaps as well because I don't know. I see this. There's a couple keycap sets that I'm thinking about that I think would look really just would just pop um, with the silver and that little bit of copper. So today I'm gonna to go ahead and leave you with a stock sound test of the Lumen Key 80 uh, with the Gatoron Silva linear switches unlubed and their double shot PBT white on black uh, keycap set. Um, if you guys have any questions, um, anything that you'd like for me to keep an eye out or any particular mod you'd like me to do when I do go ahead and open this up, please let me know down in the comments below or over on Budget Keeps or on Discord, Budget Keeps Discord. Um, I do my best to respond to every comment. Um, and I appreciate each and every one of you guys out there. I'm almost to, to 4,000 subscribers. I honestly never thought I'd hit 1,000 because... It, I know I'm not the best of editors and I don't write scripts. I'm just just saying it ha as it is, as it comes off the top of my head. So um, the fact that I'm almost to 4,000 subscribers is honestly, it's, it's, it makes me, it warms my heart. And, and I mean, I enjoy doing this regardless, but that I'm helping other people really makes me feel like I'm, I'm I know it's just keyboards, but it still makes me feel good about it helping people so anyway um i'll leave you with the sound test and until the next transmission keep calm and keyboard on